good morning everybody. Um, you're getting this chunk on my phone because I'm running late. I don't have time to take my camera out of my bag. But it's before 4 a.m. Uh, it snowed for the first time last night. It is freezing outside. And the wind is probably destroying this audio. But I am crossing Calm Ave and meeting a friend who you've met before and you will be seeing a lot more of soon actually. He's been in a good number of my videos. Um, and I'm going to the grand opening of the Medford branch of the Green Line. We're going to be on the first train. It is very exciting. And I'm going to put my phone away and get in the Uber that I think is just down here so that I don't freeze to death. And I'll see you once we get to Tufts. Good morning, everybody. We made it here. It's Andrew. Good morning. He was crazy enough to do this with me last time. I'm very cold. We're doing it again. Again. Um, I forgot my gloves, so I might get frostbite um, in exchange for making this video, but you know, worth it. it. You know, it's, again, as I told you earlier, it's opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. Yeah, that was, that, that's true. Um, this is a much bigger crowd and I would say nicer station than Union Square. I would say so as well. Um, but there's a lot left to be seen. We still have like half an hour before the train leaves. I don't know how this is gonna, we're gonna die. We'll occupy our time. It's we'll fine. figure it out. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll like, I don't know, count the bike racks in the pedal and park, which is nice. This is way better location than the Union Square one. Yeah, it's like right true. here. There's a lot more to see at the new GLX stations than just the pedal and parks though. The long-awaited Medford branch of the Green Line opened with three new miles of track and a subsequent extension of E-Branch service this morning. The new service runs alongside the Lowell Commuter Rail Line servicing five new stations and bringing rapid transit service to nearly 80% of Somerville residents. While the line isn't all peachy, fare validation is required at all stations, the new tracks have a top speed of 50 miles per hour and are expected to carry up to 50,000 people per day from their homes in the suburbs to downtown Boston in under half an hour. <laughs> First train's pulling in. Crowd is electric. This is uh, this is gonna be pretty good. Making it on the first train. We're making it on probably barely. Oh, not barely. This is fine. All right, we made it on the first train. Not wasting any time. It's much warmer here. And it is I'm so much better. I'm actually surprised we made it on the first train. This is pretty great. Yeah. There's a lot of energy for uh, 4.45 a.m. Never underestimate a Boston crowd. Never underestimate a Boston crowd of foam. Yeah. You can't see anything. It's pitch black outside. Uh, the lights are not on at the station, but we're at Ball Square. Um, we're probably going to go all the way to either Lechmere or maybe North Station so we can wait inside. And then we'll work our way back up the line. Um, but for now, enjoy the scraps of whatever footage I can get from this part of the train while it's dark outside and absolutely packed. to North Station. Um, the boards say that the next two trains are both going to Union Square, which I feel like is reasonable, considering that the first scheduled train to Medford is coming off the D branch from Riverside, and it's supposed to get to Medford at like 6-ish a.m., a little bit after. But I'm also wondering, knowing that it's the opening day, I feel like the T should be running more trains, knowing that people are gonna be wanting to get up and down the line. 
Um, so I wonder if one of those trains is technically meant for tough and it's just not updated in the system, it's not the right thing in the GTFS, I don't know. But I'm hoping we don't have to wait more than 19 minutes to go back. We have made it to Ball Square, Ball Square on a one-car Type 9 that was announcing Medford Tufts as College Avenue, standing about three inches away from Steve Poftak. This seems like this is like the pretty standard design. Oh, there's another train right behind ours. We could have gotten on that one. Yeah, no, it's okay. And actually had room to breathe. This okay. This seems pretty standard. Island platform, canopy. Um, way overdone poured concrete that probably added, you know, a million dollars to the budget uh, for this extension. But overall, not a bad station. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice looking station. It's very similar to all the rest, but, you know. I, uh, I say, I feel like once we sort of get a sense for this station, we'll have an idea of what all the other ones look like. Yeah. Something's going on down there, I don't know what. People on our train were, sweet, were singing Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline, ba ba ba, cause I've never seen so good. So good, so good, so good. We'll head down this way. We got, uh, we have history. We have these big boards with history and updated maps, the usual suspects. We also have signs about fare validation. Andrew, what are your thoughts on fare validation? Um, seeing as, I, I've lived and I've worked in cities where they do have fare validation. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of it because I don't think it works. I don't think it's very easy to enforce. And I've never seen it enforced. So I have seen it enforced on like the Hudson Bergen Light Rail in New York, but it's just generally a pain when you already have a fare gate based system to add in something like this. Yeah. And um, then people, like, you know, you actually have to think about paying. Like, and then people are gonna think a station where you do have to pay. So Yeah. You know, so tap our cards there and we're still fair paying passengers. Mm -hmm. So technically the station has one exit, it's at this end of the platform, but we also have like two exits. There's a little track crossing here to two more fare validators, the pedal and park, and another exit of sorts. Alright, back down to the platform. My hands are absolutely freezing. Um, it seems like these are all pretty basic stations. I mean, we all know this. We heard about it. You know, they had to cut cut as much spending as possible. There's no heated indoor mezzanines. There's no fare gates. There's, you know, none of this stuff. Are these stations poorly designed? Not at all. There's a very nice little area up there. Um, clear entrance. They actually have the globes this time instead of just like the 2D little signs. But it's cold. It would be really nice to have a little heated shelter down here on the platform, at the very least heat lamp. And I think that this station falls into the same mistake as a lot of the new MBTA station of just some of it is a little bit over-designed, arguably. You have these giant poured concrete foundations for everything. Um, that's something that could have been cut, not heat on freezing days like today. Um, but that's just the way it is, so we're gonna wait for the next train uh, down towards Heath Street and we'll get off at Magoon Square That is the next stop. Um, also, I will say I really like the Pedal and Park. They have Pedal and Park and they're actually located in really convenient locations. This one you can come in right off the street. There looks like there's a bus stop right near there. You just park your bike right over there. Um, you walk down a ramp and boom, you can validate your fare. It's pretty good. Okay, Magoon Square. Um, we've we've basically already seen this station because we saw Ball Square. Yeah. Um, difference with this station, uh, crossing over the tracks is at that end, and I don't know if there are any fare validators. We might have to go check that. Um, but I saw there's a track crossing down there. This end looks to be pretty much the same though. We you know we have the elevator, we have the stairs up, um, and then I'm assuming up there's an exit. Yeah, an interestingly designed bridge here, as Andrew says. Um, I think it's it's like the 
street lamps kind of bend over and create an archway. I think that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Whatever you want to do. I think it's cool. I think that this is giving a little bit of character to each station, you know? So Magoon is the one that has the weird curvy lamps. Ball Square is the one with the funny name and the sort of side entrance. And uh, we'll see what Gilman and East Somerville have to offer. Update. This weird crossing is an emergency exit. It's not even connected to the actual platform itself. Seems like that could be a great opportunity to have two exits, but I also don't know how much traffic Magoon Square gets, so it might not have been worth it. But uh, I guess that's technically a provision for an expansion in the future, which is always a good thing. Like 15 second Gilman Square review. Uh, it's normal. It looks like the same as all the other ones. Kind of basic at this end. Uh, commuter rail train just went by. <laughs> Smells like burning rubber. My hands are cold. I think you can tell by my breath that somehow it's getting colder. All right, and we are here at East Somerville, last station to check out, um, and already off to a great start. They don't have the board, so this is a, a tarp. That's good, thumbs up. Um, we have another exit, sort of like uh, Ball Square, where we have this like pedestrian crossing here. Um, fair validation done here. Pedal and Park, that's a great Pedal and Park location. That is right off the new community path. Um, which, despite the community path being way too narrow, is still pretty good. I think that's great. That's a perfect, perfect location for it. Um, I will say, more than anything else, I think this extension really encourages biking to the train. Which, which is, is awesome. Amazing. Especially because Somerville isn't super high density. Around the station seems to be a lot of single-family homes. So it's probably going to be a lot of people that need to walk a good distance or bike. Or bike. Um, Hopefully, if Blue Bikes doesn't already have stations nearby, they will install them. I don't really know the details on that, but fingers crossed. That would be a, a nice thing to have. Um, other than that, I think this has to be the most bare bones station of them all. I would say so. There is not, there aren't even technically two exits. There is only one, and it's right here. It was a lot of hype for a good amount of product. I don't know if it was how much I was expecting. I feel like I agree. You know? I mean, I'm much happier with this than Union Square. The trains sure. are going fast. The station, is, the stations are nice. Um, you know, the service seems to be like it's really good. Um, I don't like the fare validation. I don't like, you know, that it's been taking so long. But it's pretty good, especially, yeah, especially rocketing up and down these tracks at like 40 miles an hour. That is, to me, is a good sign. If nothing else. The fact that the trains are going this fast on opening day, yes, it's been like 40 years in the making, but it just means that they're actually trying to at least portray it as this good service, and that's pretty good. Yeah. My hand is starting to freeze again. I can feel Every, the frostbite setting it's in. <laughs> so, it's fine. we'll get back to you when we're at Ball Square, uh, and we'll do a final little wrap up there. Yeah. How are we All right, that just about does it. Yeah, we're back. Um, we're back on the train. We're heading heading into downtown. Yeah, it's... heading to our respective next commitments. I'm going to class. I'm <laughs> going to breakfast, and then I'm going to class. Uh, great. Um, I'll never get over that voice. Yeah, it's not good. Um, hey, if the MBTA is listening, I would gladly love to submit my voice for an audition. Please let me know. I would be happy to donate my voice. Free of charge. You should you should do it. He's, he's got a good voice. Um, but yeah, that was pretty great. Um, everybody's having fun at Ball Square. I shocked that you're able to withstand the cold for that long. But you know, we got our buttons. That's we what got the buttons. We got the merch. We got out. <laughs> um, and that's just, that's, that's kind of it. That's all I really have. Like I said, I'm glad that we have this new route. Obviously that's always amazing. Yeah. I'm glad that it's fast. 
I'm glad Next that the station ha are pretty good, you yeah, know? and I'm excited to, you know, explore Somerville a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually time. going to spend time in Somerville now because I can get there. I can just hop on the green line. So, hopefully you will come out and ride it sometime soon. Hopefully it'll continue to be a success. And thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.